Even when I do not see it, God is working. Even when I resist him, God is working. He is always working. <laughs> my name is Weston Cecil, and that is my name. Some of you might know me as Drake's dad, but I also am known by as the one. Uh, I'm the lost one Jesus had, and he searched for despite the 99 others that were not lost. A little bit about me, I was baptized as a child when I was seven years old. I knew all the Bible answers and all my friends were doing it, so hey, why not? Um, I wasn't pressured. It wasn't like anyone forced me to do it. It just felt like it was the next step in life, you know? To be clear, I had no relationship with God at this point. I went to church because my family did. I was a Christian because my family was, but it wasn't a reflection of a personal relationship with God. Over time, my relationship with the church and with other Christians turned into a legalistic and judgmental relationship. I was a Pharisee. You know, I, I had no business judging others, but that's what I did. You know, instead of looking at the plank in my own eye, I was looking for specks in the eyes of others. Uh, in fact, by the time I was 21, I wasn't even in the church. I was out chasing women, booze, money, other desires of the flesh. I was doing everything but pursuing Christ. <laughs> by nature, I'm a prideful, arrogant, lazy, an adulterer, drunkard, liar, a thief, and more. And yet, despite all that, God never stopped reaching out for me. It didn't matter to him. Around five or six years ago, I finally started seeing the ways that God was revealing himself to me despite my sin. I was able to see him continually reaching out. Despite the sin that I purposely dove headlong into, God still loves me. He still sought me out and he treated me like the lost sheep I was. God has been slowly working my life these last few years and it got to the point where I had no choice but to accept him. I couldn't ignore him anymore. For a few years, I tried to be, you know, a Christian where I only did for the kingdom what I was comfortable with. I was worried that, you know, someone like the old me might say this about me, or I was worried what, you know, ramifications there might be with me having a public confession like this before a baptism. I hate the idea of being the focus of attention. I honestly, the way I feel, I have so much guilt and shame for the way that I've lived my life that I felt like if I opened myself up and if people could see the real me, the ugly me, how flawed and broken I really was, they wouldn't want me around and that God wouldn't either. However, that's not who God is and God didn't accept that. He wants me regardless of what others say or do or think. God is bigger than my fears, he's bigger than the waves around me, and he's bigger than anything else I can possibly use as an excuse. So I decided to give God 100%. I decided to stop living my life based on what others might say, might think, or might do. The only thing that matters in my life is God, and his opinion of me is what I strive for. I struggled for a while whether I should be baptized again. After all, I was baptized previously, and after struggling for a while, I reached out to David Hayes, and we prayed about it, and in truly, you know, miraculous God fashion, in less than 24 hours, God showed to both of us that I should be baptized. I'd love to tell you about it sometime, actually. God calls us to repent and be baptized. And like I said, I was baptized previously, but there was no repentance accompanying that action. It was a hollow shell that was a reflection of my hollow faith. Um, I stand here today to rectify that. I have repented. I have asked God to forgive me and to make me a better person. And I'm here today to follow his clear instructions throughout scripture and in the way he revealed himself to me several weeks back. I'm here also today so that all of you can see me and know that the Weston Cecil of five, six, ten years ago has died. He's been reborn and he is actively being remade. I'm here today so you can see and hold me accountable moving forward as I continue to walk through faith. I'm also here today sharing my story so that if you are watching this and you feel that you have to hide who you are, or that you have to be a, a fake person because the people around you will know how dirty and unclean you are and how imperfect you are, you can know that I'm not and that you're not any worse than me. Your sins aren't worse than mine, your sins don't scare me, and your sins definitely don't scare God. If that is you, come talk to me or come talk to the guys up front today. Seek God. Don't, don't run away. I spent 23 years, give or take, fighting God, and look where it got me, right back where I was when I was seven years old. So be better than me. Don't assume that you will have 23 years from today to fight it over to think about. We're not promised tomorrow. And for some of us, unfortunately, tomorrow will be too late. But as for me, I do not fear tomorrow because to die is gain and to live is Christ. Thank you.